so things happened and I lost my voice as you can tell so I'm gonna try getting through this video as best as I can but uh, things do seem to happen in threes so I went to TPF I had a lot of fun I'm hoping to show you guys some of like what TPF was like through the walk through video this is by no means what I originally had in mind but uh, just to give you an idea of how last week started um, I had an accident I broke one of my teeth in half and then I had to get it extracted and get the surgery started to get a basically you know fake tooth put in it eventually um, then after that the, the day after I got the extraction got the stitches and all that stuff done then I boarded a plane to go to TPF and I had a great time and normally my voice is a little bit out because you have to like yell a lot at these things and stuff like that but uh, my voice has been completely out for like a week now but I don't want to leave you guys with like no content for like over a week or something for something I can't you know deal with so when I got back I got some kind of concrete or something and this is the result of it so hopefully this clears up by next week um, this week I had to cancel like all my freaking appointments and stuff that I had going on this week so I'm not taking any meetings or anything like that I'm just trying to recover but uh, forgive me if this video is not exactly up to the same kind of quality that I, I would like hey guys thought this morning I'd give you a brief walkthrough of Texas Pinball Festival starting this morning with the swap meet swap meet something that I, I really only saw it for locals but I know a lot of people said they were gonna go tomorrow so I'm gonna go check it out and see what it's all about but uh, I got you guys on the gimbal so we'll just take a walk around and then after that we'll take a walk around inside the convention center see what it's all about Okay, I just want to say real quick that this is my first time that I've ever actually used the gimbal in this setting. So if you see like quick cuts and stuff like that, or fades, it's probably me trying to hide the fact that I had to reset the gimbal and there's like a really sharp movement or something I don't want you guys to catch, so just, just so we know. So this is the morning of the swap meet. I just got there a little bit late, so I think like a lot of really good stuff that was kind of there, I kind of missed. So we'll, you know, but we'll just go with it. So I wanted to give you guys a little experience. I did end up getting something from the swap meet, nothing huge, but uh, if I'd lived in Texas, I might have considered like looking at some of these pinball machines and stuff, seeing that I'm getting into like more older single level stuff and all that. And some of the prices people were asking were not that bad. There was a few arcade machines and stuff too, but at this point right now, I'm just interested in the older pinball stuff. When I got there, I was expecting things like amusement based stuff, not just pinball, but arcade, slot machines. That wasn't a surprise. But I was really surprised how this was like also just like a general swap meet. So there was like a lot of really cool stuff there, like old radios and like beer mirrors for like wow. bars and stuff like that. And then there was like some really cool stuff like um, that Radio Shack sign. I saw like a couple NESs and stuff. But it was kind of neat to see like the different variety of like different things going on here besides just pinball. Go ahead, man. <laughs> no reason to be sorry. I promise you, it won't capture your soul. I get this all the time at events like this where people are like trying to duck or move out of the camera's way. It's funny, like if I used a cell phone, nobody would think twice about it. But because I have a camera on a gimbal, people all of a sudden I act like I'm trying to capture a soul. And I just think it's funny at public events like this. I'm just here to get more, uh, more attention on pinball. Almost looks like an ice cold beer. Oh, 
bunch of boards, TNG. If you live in Texas and you're looking for parts for your machines, this is honestly a really good place to find them. I wish I knew how to work on EMs way better because there were so many EMs here and I was like, they look like really good projects, but the EMs just scare the crap out of me. There's just so much going on in them. That's a restore. Those are freaking cool. These neons, guys. So in high school, I had a machine just like this, but it was Pepsi. Finally ran into a nice lot of some pinball machines. Some of them are kind of like undesirables, like I saw Shack Attack there. And there's no love for Shack Attack, but there would be a couple cool ones. If I had a garage, I would probably pick them up as a project. Harlem. Got an empty cab. Can't believe I didn't see this first time through, but this is a 1978 Stern Stars, and this is one of the machines that's like on my list that I want to own one day, and I just walked right past it. Although I wouldn't have had a way to get it home, but it's cool that it was there. I noticed that Operation Thunder back there, and I'm just like, the machine's probably not good, but kick ass name. Hmm. So here we are at uh, Texas Pinball Festival. Let's go ahead and walk in and take a look around. It's going to be busy. It's a Saturday. So here's Godfather. This is one of the first machines you see when you walk in. I got to play a little bit of it on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I played it all three days. I did feel like a lot of shots because of you taking out the henchmen were straight up the middle. But overall, I really liked it. I do think it's one of Jersey Jack's best machines I've played so far. It did shoot slightly better on the flippers, but didn't quite win me over. But I would play this on location anytime. I just wouldn't own one.
All right, the infamous Pulp Fiction, the game that I went ahead and put a deposit down on, and it did not disappoint. In my opinion, this was the prettiest looking machine there. It was also a lot of fun, despite it was kind of worrisome the first time I went up and played it. I drained all three balls pretty quickly. Um, the ball is very wild in this machine. Once you get kind of the hang of it, you can stay with the game a little bit longer, but not disappointed at all. This game is really cool. And I'm really glad that uh, this is why I decided to get this here. Can you get in and get a shot real quick? Oh, yeah. Thanks. Scooby was not on my radar at all this year, but holy crap, did I have a lot of fun with this machine. It kind of reminded me of white water a little bit. I don't know why, but that's the feeling I got from it. But it seems like there's a lot more code that needs to be finished, like the ball locks on the bottom of the apron weren't working at all. It just kicked the ball back out. Funny how sometimes you notice things after you start recording, but right there on the left is Heidi from uh, Frisco Pinball. Hey, we had uh, lunch later on that day, and it was a lot of fun, but hey, dude, how you doing? I saw you now. back for that later lion man oh, swords of fury is very high on my list This year seemed like there weren't as many of uh, collector machines there as there was last year, which was a little bit weird, but it was perfectly fine because I was spent most of the time playing new stuff anyways. This is the first time I got to lay my hands on a Bond Pro because the only other one I played before this was a premium. And I gotta tell you, if you were up for one of these, I would think the Pro would be the way to go. Now Homegrown disagrees with me on that, but I don't think the jetpack's gonna really amount to a whole lot. We'll have to wait and see how the code shapes up. So I got to play Foo Fighters Pro and Premium. In my opinion, if you're going to spend the money and you've got the extra money to put into this, get the Premium. I think it's that much better. Um, my friend Jack, who designed this, did a great job. It shoots phenomenally. I love how every time, like as I'm going through, I can come up with like five different ways to get the ball across different shots and stuff like that. Um, I like the multi-ball mode start up on the upper play field, but... I really had a good time with this game. Now, unfortunately, I'm getting Pulp Fiction this year, but this is probably second game on my list. So it, I think really highly of it. I think it's a really good machine.
Excuse me. They also had regular arcade games there, like last year. They had one of those um, Pac-Man Pixel Bash. The arcade machines that has like a bunch of Namco games. And it also had uh, a refrigerator. I was like, hmm, that looks like a good idea. There's a homebrew beer fest machine there. My uh, friend Homegrown loved this. I've seen this a couple times. That by far was one of the best condition uh, baby Pac-Man machines I've ever seen. Yeah, Bought a wallet off these guys that was pretty cool. Have you ever seen Pulp Fiction? You know what kind of wallet it is. That's all I'm going to say. This guy had a lot of really cool marquees for arcade machines, but he was charging a little bit more than I wanted to pay. And I happened to find at the swap meet a Play Choice 10 marquee that was just a little dirty, just need cleaned up, and I got that for five bucks. Aliens is one of my favorite arcade games ever, but not the original cab, but uh, I would love to have that one day. My favorite thing about the conventions like this is just the noise of old EMs ringing in arcade machines and 90s pinball. This section over here is the pre-war pinball se section. And this is mostly machines from like the 20s, 30s, and a lot of these are really cool, like that one right there, like play ball, doesn't use any electricity, it's just mechanical. Besides the new stuff, this is where I spent a lot of my time over the weekend was playing this older stuff because you never see it. Okay, I'm just going to let this roll through for the rest of the uh, walkthrough and give my voice a break because it is officially done, folks. Uh, thanks for joining me on this video. And uh, I'll have more to say on the other pins. I did play Queen, uh, Galactic Tank Force, and Final Resistance. I really liked Final Resistance. Queen I wasn't so hot on. And uh, Galactic Tank Force, I need to play more of that.
Okay, so the hall was rather loud, so I can't really talk in there. Kind of curious if I'm just going to have to put music and stuff over. But this is the last little hall here. There's a couple machines and stuff stuck out here. Let's go out running, hang on. It's a freaking Cuphead arcade machine. Interesting how they made it look aged. So that pretty much is look of uh, walkthrough of it that I promised you guys. I'm going to go put this away and go enjoy some pinball. And uh, hopefully you guys can make it next year. Despite all this, I, I still had a really good time. Even with an extracted tooth and me being on pain meds and stuff and not being able to drink and all that, I would still go to TPF any time of the year. It's my main thing I always look forward to. And so with that being said, despite everything else going on, it was worth the trouble. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope my voice isn't too bad for you to listen to right now. Uh, but I'll see you in the next one whenever this thing decides to heal up. This is, this is pretty tremendous. So anyways, you guys have a good one and I'm going to go take a nap.